Hello everybody, Jason here. Today we're going to be reloading some uh, 3030 Winchester. I decided to take a break from reloading the 223 and uh, <clears throat> my son asked me, uh, Dad why don't we reload any 3030 anymore? So for him, today we're going to reload some 3030. You gotta excuse me today, I'm feeling kind of under the weather. We've been having a lot of forest fires around us today. Well not just today but in the last couple weeks and my family and I, we went boating yesterday up in Idaho and uh, the smoke got to my eyes, got down into my throat and uh, I'm just not feeling the best today. But anyway, stay tuned and I'll show you how I reload my 3030 Winchester. Okay, today we're going to be using all of our data out of the Lyman 49th edition book. Uh, we're going to be using some Hornady 170 grain bullets. There they are right there. You're going to need the Winchester large rifle primers. We're going to be using the Lyman 3030 die set. I believe it's just a two piece die set. And a shell holder. We're going to be using the Lyman large primer tube with the large primer priming tool. Uh, some other things that we're going to need a funnel, my dial calipers. If you have digital, those work great too. I'm just, uh, I use my dial. After 30 years in the machining industry, I collect old calipers. Uh, today we're going to be using a digital scale, some deburr tools. case brush, primer pocket brush, um, you can use, you need some sort of case lube, here is a Lyman case lube, it's kind of like a ink pad, but it's for case lube pad, we're not going to be using this today, we're going to be using what's left of my RCBS case lube. I make my own but for some reason my son when he moved out he took my case lube that I made with him. So we'll be using this one today. The powder we're going to be using today is the Hodgden Lever, Lever Revolution now I'll get to the load data on that later. So, all right, I've had my brass tumbling in a tumbler with a little bit of Dillon Rapid Polish. Cleans them up pretty good. I'm just gonna sift them out. I don't know if you could see this or not what I'm doing. good job at cleaning them. I don't know if so I'm going to put them all in a bin and I'll meet you over at the reloading bench in just a minute. Okay I got my brass sifted and I've got them in a a bin. Next thing we do is we need to get our recipe for what we're gonna make today. <clears throat> so I'm using like I said the Lyman 49th edition to get a lot of my data from. Let's see, as you can see here, I'm under the 3030 Winchester. 
and I'm going to have a piece of paper here that I'm going to write it down. So I'm going to go 30, 30 Winchester. Okay, our trim to length, which is right here, 2 inches, 28 thousandths. So I'll put trim to length. Primers, Winchester Large Rifle. That's what we're going to have. Winchester Large Rifle. Um, the bullets we're going to be using. 170 grain. And the 308. That's for 30 30. 170 grain. Okay, now I'm on the 170 grain. I found the 170 grain bullets. But if you look down here for all the different powders, there wasn't one for lever. So what I did is I got onto their website at hodgton.com. And I pulled it up here for the lever action or for the lever 308 diameter bullet which we're using. Starting grain is 33. Maximum is 36.3. So we're gonna go in the middle. We're going to about to a 34 and a half grain. So I'm gonna write that here. And then, but on the website for this grain, it says to take it to 2 inches 550. So we'll take it to there, we'll press it into 2.550 overall length. Okay, now that we got our recipe, let's go on to the next step. All right, the first step we're going to do is we're going to decap. So here's our decapping die for the 3030. And today we're going to be using the Lyman six station press. And we've got a Lyman number six shell holder. We're going to pop that in place. We're going to bring this up to the top of the stroke. Bring this down to where it touches. a little bit more it's already my die was already set on the lock ring where we need to be so we're good okay before you put any of your brass into the press we're gonna want to lube them up and like I said today we're just using just a spray lube I'll just do probably 10 or so Then you just do one shot, and then you just kind of work them in a little bit. Let that sit for a few minutes, and then we'll be ready to press. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to lube up the rest of these. I'm not going to bore you with all that extra stuff I'm going to do. So I'll be back when I've got all these lubed. Okay, I've got all my brass here lubricated. Now what we're going to do is go and take that primer out. So always make sure your primer or your cases are lubed. I'm going to bring it up. And it's going to be hard bringing it down because what that's doing is it's also forming that mouth. 
So we just did what they call a full length size die. I'm going to do some more. And see that primer come out. kind of awkward for me to do it this way so you guys can see what it's doing but it's okay I don't know if I showed you this press or not but you can index it to different stations so it's almost for those who are in between a single stage and a progressive it's that in between press and it works pretty good I've done a lot of brass on this I'll go and do a couple more. I don't know if you... I thought that one was bell mouth, but it wasn't. Okay, I'll go through do all of these and one thing you want to be careful for if you're using the ink pad type of lubrication is getting too much lube on this case because what you'll run into is it will actually distort the this part of the brass right here it will actually put little wrinkles in the brass and deform it I don't know if you can see this, but this brass has kind of been deformed on the diameter there. And that's a good example of what this sizing die will do. It's hard bringing it down because what it did was it formed it circular again. So I'll go through, finish these up, and then I'll meet you at the next station. So this one is decapping takes that cap out the spent cap we'll see in a minute and I just found something interesting I want to show you guys I was going through here um, this one was a range brass I don't know if you can see on this up here how beat up it is see that how beat up it is something majorly happened on the reloading process of this brass so if you find anything like that don't even hesitate just throw it away it's not worth your time it's not worth getting something wrong with your gun that's one thing about picking up range brass is you got to be careful on what what it looks like inspect 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 so anyway I just thought I'd show you that one okay I just ran into something else I want to show you guys my tray that I normally use is full. I have more brass than I thought I did. Um, something that works really good, which probably a lot of you already know, is when you go to the range, these work really well to put your brass in. Here's another. This will work good for pistol. Just come home, clean them, use them again. In fact, I found this one at the range, and I'm going to finish off with this one. That works really good, putting my brass in. So, anyway. Okay, the next step, now that we've got them all decapped, is <clears throat> I trim them. There's a few ways to trim these. Today, we're going to use this Lyman Universal Trimmer. Um, there are a few other ways you could do it. One other way is, I'm going to move this, is using this rapid trimmer. If I had the dies for the 3030, I would use that rapid trimmer. That does a really good job. Another way, another thing you can do is people, I don't, I don't use it myself, but you can use a drill, a drill motor and put the brass on a shaft and then tighten it up 
and it will trim it. Um, my buddy Jujitsu 2000, he uses that. Go look at some of his videos, and he'll demonstrate on how to use that type of trimmer. But today, like I said, we're going to use this one, and uh, I'll show you how I do this. Okay. <clears throat> one thing I like about this Lyman Universal is it comes with a bunch of these guides for the different calibers you use and it can go anywhere basically from a 20 or a 223 all the way up to a 45 auto and I've already got the 30 caliber guide installed excuse me I got the hiccups <clears throat> and we're going to trim these to 2 inches 28 so I'll bring it around this way so it's easier for me to Hold on to it. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit. Put it in. Slide that up. I don't know if you can see. I can just slide that up. Lock it in place. And normally you should have it on a board, but I don't, so I just hold on to it here. Give it a couple turns, bring it out. And this one, let's see what it measures. 2.029, so almost 28. That's good enough for me. I'll leave it at that. That one didn't cut, so it's probably already under. Let me move this a little bit for you. Boy, I think some of these have already been trimmed because they're not cutting. Let me measure. Now this one's about 24. 2 inches 24. So about 4 thousandths under. That should still be good. I don't go out. Just I, All I do with this gun is just go out and plink with it. It's a good little brush gun. There we go. You can see that nice cut on there. Leaves a burr. Two inches twenty nine. Close enough. All right, <clears throat> I'll do just a few more. And then I'll go through and do them all. Oh, that one's got a lot to cut off. And you can tell when you're done, it's not cutting anymore, and it gets easier. Once I get in the groove, at 2 inches 29, once I get in the groove, I check every 10 parts. Okay, now that I got all of the brass trimmed, it's time to deburr them. So to deburr them, I take my Lyman multi-tool. I don't know if you can. And I'm just going to deburr, put a light chamfer, her countersink on the inside. Just a light countersink on the primer pocket. And then put a chamfer, just a small chamfer, on the OD. And then I grab my drill motor, and it's got a, just a brush on the end, and I just give it a primer pocket of cleaning. 
just like so. See how shiny that is? So I'll, I'll do another one. But normally I go through and I'll countersink all of them. And then I, after that's done, I go through and I de or uh, do the brush. So I'll do a couple more. And this is just to make it so it's easy to put the primer in on the outside, easy to seat the bullet, and then just deburr the outside. Look how. See how dirty that is? And then we'll just touch it up real quick. I think both Lyman and RCBS sell a multi-tool. It's an automated bench top that will you could just put it on and it will do all stations that I'm doing in one stroke. And that makes it a lot easier, but for what I'm doing, this is good enough. Kind of cumbersome, but I don't shoot a whole lot of 30-30, so maybe one day I'll invest in one of those tools that I think it's the RCBS uh, station or a brass prep station or shell prep station. real quick and easy but then after I go through all 100 or 98 of these one way I'll go through with my brush on my uh, drill and do the primer pockets kind of easy to get a groove going I'll go through and finish up all of these and uh, I'll be back to show you my next step okay I went through and I deburred all of these on the uh, inside I don't know if you can see that and I also did the primer pocket with the brush now what I want to do is, this is just an optional, not everybody does this, but I want to degrease these before I put any primers in the pocket and any powder in there. So what I normally do is I have a rotary tumble with the stainless steel media. And I've got a little bit of Dawn dish soap in there. And I'm going to tumble those with the lemon shine for about a half hour and that's going to degrease them. I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I'm going to take half of my brass and put half of it in one. I've got the dual drums, so I'll put half of it in one drum and half of it in the other. Like I said, this is just an optional step that you don't have to do but I just like to do it to get all the grease actually it's from the lanolin get all that off of these cases I like to get them nice and clean and I'll usually let this go because they're already cleaned. All, all I'm going to do is just degrease them like I said. I'm going to let these go for about 20 minutes in the tumbler. And they'll come out nice and clean. Okay, after I put the brass in, get a little bit of lemon shine. Dump it in there just a little bit, a couple teaspoons. And then fill it up with water. I'll go 
we'll fill that other one up with water and I'll be right back. Alright, I got these full of water. I don't know if it's about what they'll look like. They're already starting to degrease a little bit from that Dawn dish soap. Oops. So I'll put the lids on them. And this is just, I think if you've seen any of my other videos, this is just a basic Harbor Freight rock polisher. And I can't say enough how it does a good job. You know, if you want to go out and spend a couple hundred dollars on a, other brands, Frankfurt Arsenal makes one that's good too. But for if you can get a coupon from Harbor Freight, these are anywhere from forty to fifty dollars and they do a pretty good job I've had mine probably three years now and it does a good job like I said the only thing about the Harbor Freight polisher is my belts are starting to wear out on it so what I do is I normally turn it on and then place one on there. You can tell it's starting to slow it down. Oh, there it goes. So I'll let that go for about 20 minutes, half hour, and we'll come back and see what they look like. All right, these have been going for roughly 30 minutes. Let's see what they... Uh, look like here ah, nice and soapy they look pretty good pretty shiny most of all they feel degreased so I'll go rinse these out real quick in my sink, dry them off, and then we'll be ready to put some primers in. Be right back. Okay, I got my brass dried off, and I actually put them in the oven. I heated up my oven to about 170 degrees. I turned off the oven and then put the brass in for about 20 minutes, and that made them nice and dry and residue-free. I don't know if you can see down in that, but everything's nice and clean and dry. And I'm ready to go on to the next step, which is putting the primers in. All right, to get this press ready for the primers, I'm just going to advance my primer seating tool or feed tube tool over to this station. And I'm going to use the large primer pickup rod. And then we're going to need the primer plate, I guess. And we're going to drop sorry. We're going to put all the primers on this tray. Okay, I'm gonna, after the primer's right here, I'm gonna shake this a little bit and see how it gets them all facing up. Gotta turn this around, just like so. Now I'm gonna go through with the pickup tube and pick these up like so. I want the shiny side up so they're going in like so. And I put a cotter pin right there so when I turn it upside down to put it inside my primer feed they all won't fall out. All right we're gonna put the primer tube 
in the hole like so. But when I do, I'm going to pull this pin and then they'll all fall down in. Do you hear that? You might have a couple up here. There. So that's ready to go. And then I'm going to take off my catch direct tray for the spent primers. And I usually put them in a, a bottle. Hook up the primer seating tool. Like so. All right, there's a side view. If I can get a brass, put in the shell holder. I'm gonna lift up the shell holder. Push this down in, make sure I've got a primer, and I do. And seat it. There you go, just like that. So these should go by pretty fast. And when this automatically went back, there's a primer already in, ready to go. Always make sure that there's a primer. That one didn't pick it up. There it goes. Just like so, I want to just make sure it's below the surface. Concentrate, focus on that. so easy to do. I love I love this type or this press for doing this. Okay, I'll go through do the rest of them. Be ready to put some powder in. Okay, I got all the brass primed and we're ready to do a powder charge. But I found out that uh, I've only got 54 bullets left. So I'm not going to do primer or uh, powder on all of my brass. I'm only going to do it on 54 of them. Okay, we're at the powder charge and just to go over it again. We've, uh, we're going to use 34 and a half grain of the LVR. So 34 and a half grain. For this, we're going to need the digital scale. I'll zero it out. And what I like to do. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to zero that out. And I need my funnel. I'm going to take this, drop the charge. This is just a temporary stand. I've got a RCBS powder stand with a Lyman powder charge, <laughs> whatever works. Uh, we are at 34.45, so that's perfect. Oh, no. Yeah, you can see that. So I'm going to bring that over here. And start dropping some more. For the first couple, let's, let's re-zero another one. Just to make sure that everything's settled in thirty three point seven zero that one they say to do this to settle it all down Thirty 
34.3. Okay. powder that we're using is considered a ball powder. Basically what that means is it's got like a bunch of BBs and the other kind of powder that you can use. It looks like uh, graphite and I don't like that as much because when you're using this type of powder measure it wants to cut it. Thirty-four point one, thirty-four point two. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go through and finish. Okay. As you can remember, we were seeding our primers with this, so we'll just move to an empty station, and we're going to get our bullet seeding die. I want to raise the ram up. Until it touches. Now this particular press has like a cam over. So you got to activate that. And then you want to back it off. Let's go half a turn. We're, that's for the crimping feature. We're not going to use the crimping feature right now. Here's one of the bullets for the 30-30 lever action. You don't want a sharp tip. You want that rounded tip. This is where our calipers are going to come in handy. And we're going to seat it to 2 inches 550. Let me turn it off my scale. I'm going to back the make sure I got the right one. You know, see that how it's got kind of a cone in there that fits best. So we're going to feed this in just barely. Bring this up. Okay, that just barely touches. We've got a long ways to go. Basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at that cannula and I'm adjusting the depth right here. I want to go down until I get close to that cannula. I'm getting close. Actually, I went a little bit too far, so I'm going to back it up. I went 10,000 too far just by eyeballing it. So I'm going to get a fresh one. I just want to check one more. Okay, I'm going about two inches, five forty-five. And if you remember, two inches five fifty was what the website said, and then two inches five forty was what the book said. So I'm just going to go straight for the middle, 
Now I'm going to back off my bullet seating die, come back up, and now I'm setting the crimp. And you're going to bring or loosen up the lock ring. And just start taking it in until you can see a slight crimp. There we go. What that's doing is setting the crimp into the cannula. So now that that's set, I'm going to bring this back up, bring down the seating die to touch it. Lock it down. Lock down this ring. Get another bullet. And that's how it's done. I'll go through and do a few more. good crimp on it. That's going to look good. And I'll go ahead and do all these and then come back to you. Okay everybody, that uh, concludes my video on reloading the 3030 there is one step that I need to do and I just realized I can't do it and that is checking checking it with the headspace gauge I loaned mine out to a friend and he never returned it so I gotta go get it so as soon as I get it back I will check these brass with a headspace gauge or case length gauge or whatever you call them but here they are ready to go thanks for stopping by today I appreciate you guys uh, stopping by and watching me how I do my 3030 reloading uh, hopefully you guys learned something or learned something new and feel free to thumbs up share and like and uh, stay tuned my next video I'm probably gonna do some 30-06 shells it's getting hunting season and my boys harassing me to do some 30 out six shells for them to go hunt deer with so uh, anyway thanks again for stopping by and have a great day everybody bye bye